stand at the corner to the entrance of the Elizabeth Fort on Barrack Street. Do not go in through the big door. Stoop through the little one. Look to the left. See the window? Barred? Look to the right. See the doorway? Also barred? Look ahead. See the archway into the fort proper? Don't go through there. Walk to the barred window on the left. Look inside. Crouching down, looking up, see the sky. It is a different sky to the one over the rest of Cork. It is the sky of a prisoner. There's a giant tortoise in this cell who had the misfortune of being the last of his kind. In the interest of public safety, preservation, ecology and the maintenance of control, it is imperative that he be kept there. He may not be visible. Do not worry, he is in there. Yes, yes, it's very unfair. But this is the way the world works. Now, turn around and walk over to the barred door. Look inside. There's a giraffe living in there. Not the last of her kind, nor in any particular ecological den danger, but she has halitosis. That is to say, very toxically bad breath. And so she has entered into seclusion, so as not to breathe her noxious fumes all over the poor citizens of the city. She has ample space, it must be said. And, as can be seen, a view of the city. Fresh grasses and bedding are provided each day, and she even has a little table on which to play solitaire. Over there, to the left. Giraffes love cards. Look up now at the archway into the fort proper. See the light? It is sensitive, and it is triggered not by movement, as might be thought, but by the desire to help. If a sentient being walks from one cell to the other with the desire to help, the light will flare up and alarms will sound. It's a very sophisticated system, designed to prevent aid from being given. Mercy, pity, empathy, generosity, these are unpredictable things and therefore unsafe, so must be prevented at all costs. Everything tries to escape from this place. See the flowers on the wall by the giraffe cell? They're slowly climbing up the wall in an attempt to get away. The authorities are not worried. The plants are very slow. And what they have not realised is that once they get to the top of the wall, there's nowhere much for them to go. The tortoise did once try to escape. Through the black steel door there, on the left. It was a futile attempt. He only succeeded in chipping his shell. Tortoises, giant or not, are not in fact stronger than steel doors, as it turns out. His reason for the attempt was that he had fallen in love with the giraffe, or so he claimed, and having picked some summer flowers, wanted to cross over to her cell and deliver their, them to, to her. But that sort of thing is inappropriate and therefore not allowed. From time to time, he composes trite little love poems and shoves them through the little gap in the wall just under his window. One of them read like this. Roses are red, your neck is long. I live in a shell, check out my schlong. Hardly heartwarming stuff. Occasionally he leaves other scraps of paper, notes or letters, in the hope, silly, silly hope, hoping that some soft-hearted person will transport them to the ten paces across to his love. But no one ever helps. No one ever cares. Or if they do care, it is forbidden. Caring has been declared unfair and quite illegal, owing to the fact that some people do not care and others have no one to care for them. It cannot be regulated and must not be encouraged. Look up at the sky above the fort. This is the sky of the now, of citizens enlightened. This is the sky of a world that has progressed beyond helping. 
Some silly soul still checked the tortoise's box, the little hole under his window for letters, and if found, they carry them over to his love, but most have moved on. Turn around now and walk out. There's nothing more to see here. 